I mean, did she ever turn to you and kind of joke about the fact that it was it was kind of like what we call a typical D Douglas Sirk kind of exaggerated movie? I mean, life wasn't like that, right? Uh, life wasn't like that? Yeah, an imitation of life. Oh, life is just like that, even more so. Okay. You know, I told, let me tell you what, when I was doing that movie, my, my neighbor lived downstairs, her name was Blanche, wonderful woman, they helped me with the lines cry all the time. Every time I turned around, Blanche was crying because she had a daughter. She, she's from New York, um, Puerto Rican and black. Now the daughter ended up blonde, almost like Lana. So the aunt took the daughter Blacks came live in New York in California out there downstairs from me. Now when Blacks would go back to see her daughter, you know she'd have to go through the back door. They didn't want them. They didn't want them to know that her, her mother was black. So that was during when I was making Imitation of Life. Blacks would read the lines with me and cry and everything, because the same thing was happening at that time. That's so it, it, it's probably hard for you to believe. Now, Lana got a piece of the picture, so she yes. must have been aware of the fact that they were asking, like, Mahalia Jackson and Pearl Bailey to yes, play this role. Yes. So she must have had some say on you. Did you know her at all? Before you I didn't know her at all. Okay. She didn't have any say on me. Uh, only Ross Hunter had something to do with me. Okay. Now, the, yeah, the so big... So let, let's get back to the first, the, the, your favorite scene where it's the two of you. Oh, Let's see, which is the fa my favorite. Oh, it's the scene where uh, we're on the steps. It's not just the two of us, it's three of us. Yeah, because it's her daughter um, that, uh, uh, that denies, not her daughter, my daughter, that denies me. And it's on the stairs, it's on the stairs. She sneaks in late at night. She's been out very late, my daughter. And she sneaks in, and I catch her on the stairs. And we have an altercation, and that's the first time that, uh, that uh, she has denied you know, at me as her mother, you know. She, because prior to that, she said Lana was her mother. And that's the scene when we, we sort of have an altercation there and Lana comes to my, you know, and she puts her arms around me and tells me, you know, that she can take care of it and we'll get along. That was my favorite scene with Lana because I was really distraught there with my daughter because she was such a terrible person. And Lana, she comes to my rescue because my daughter was talking to me very harshly there. Yeah, that one, that, that, that's a good scene there, I thought. And then there was another scene that I liked too with Lana was when, yeah, when my daughter had left me, left us rather, left the household and had gone away. And then Lana comes and she talks to me. and She tells me that, uh, Everything's going to be all right. We're going to bring her back. And tells me not to worry. I like that. I believed her when she told me that. When she told me not to worry, we're going to bring her back. So she was really into that. Lana got into it. Oh, right? she did. She, she really... wasn't off in the dressing room fixing her hair. I mean, she no, was... she was on the set all the time. She was right with me. She stayed in character, you hear me? Yes, she did. She stayed right in character. She didn't wander out. She stayed right there with, with me, Annie. Annie, that's what she called me, Annie. So, and that helped her, it helped me too. Helped her to stay in character, you know? You just can't jump in and out, some people can. But most of us as actors or actresses can't do that. We try, but we're not successful. And did, was there any other instance? So, so basically, she would cry a lot in any scene that was sad. No, no, <laughs> no, no. You, she could You can't do that. No, but I mean, but I mean, she was easily moved by the scenes. Very, very much so, because she was so.
tight, uptight, you know, about her own, what was going on within, within, as well as trying to do what was going on within me as a, as Annie. And she had her own problem that was really going on in her heart. I don't know how she did it, but she did. I don't know how she stood up and as long as she did. You know, I, I just don't know how she didn't just break down and, and cry, which she finally did, you know, for three days. But I think that made her stronger and felt better. When she came back, she didn't cry anymore. I don't know, it seemed to me that uh, she never found anybody that loved her, for her, not for Lana Turner, but for Lana. And, and maybe that's what she was searching for, maybe that was her father. I don't know, but uh, she certainly deserved better, but she seemed to pick worse. I don't know, I really don't know. I was wondering why she married Steve, you know, this man, I don't know. This stomponado, that was, I, I, I can understand how she got involved with him, but. He was good looking. Yeah. They, they usually have a lot of charisma, those kind of fellows. <laughs> Let me tell you. Mm-hmm. I don't, I, 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 you know, there are several men out there that uh, had that sort of charisma that he had. And being in the business that I was in, I met a lot of them, you know, that just kind of swept you off your feet, you know. Good with giving you this and good with giving you that. And, but no stability but made good, you know, drinking partners and having a good time. I met several of them, white and black, mostly white at that time, you know. So I, I can understand how she got carried away, you know. <laughs> I mean, she makes Madonna look very ordinary because she was a big risk taker woman. And I know I talked to a lot of people at MGM and they said, uh, she wouldn't let those men push her around. Louis B. Mayer, when she was 16, she wouldn't let him push her around. But don't you think that's from coming up so hard with the father dying and being in foster care? I mean, once you've been through that and you're eight years old, nobody's going to really scare you that much. I, I shouldn't think, think so. I, I think you become independent at a, at a very young age when you, you lose your father and you go into the foster home. Those foster homes, especially then, they're a little better now, but then they were not, mm -mm, no, they were terrible. But uh, you get a hard shell real soon, you know, and that's probably what happened to Lana in that respect. But her heart was so good, you know. The outer part might have been, you know, like a turtle hard shell, but inside her heart, mm, her heart was, very soft, very giving a heart. What do you think? I, I, think, we're, I, we're, I think we're great. I do too. That's great. Juanita, thank you so much. Thank you very, very much. Oh, you were wonderful. Oh.